this video was originally recorded at the annual Buddha and the Yogis retreat at Menla in Phoenicia, New York. To learn more about this annual program, please visit menla.us. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. So I'm so happy to see you both. Actually, we met in Boulder last month, and so it's like old, just like normal. <laughs> uh, Boulder is really nice, actually. I understand why they love to be there. And uh, what? On mute. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, can you hear it now? Is that better? Yes. Thank you. But anyway, I'm so happy to see them both, and I'm so happy to see all of you. And uh, as you know, this is Buddha and the Yoginis. Actually, rather than just yogis, it's yogi needs. I have a thing that I write because in Sanskrit, you know, the masculine is supposed to stand for masculine and feminine according to Pandani or ancient Sanskrit rules. I mean, that's their excuse. That's just, their like, excuse. just like in English, <laughs> yeah, mankind you know, means both. You know. But anyway, right. that is technically the thing. So whenever I see yogi in a translation from Sanskrit or Tibetan, I write yogi slash ni. Yes. Then long yogi <coughs> And so this that's what I've written this time. Buddha and the yogi ni. Some way there it is. Oh yeah. Yogi ni. So it so it what happened? So it means either one. And I'm especially happy. So Mary is joining us now. And Mary, actually you're the leader now. We're just following along. We we have been all along. You know? That's the way it is, no, right? It. But, but now you are exposed. To the so I think you should, you know, welcome to you both and thank you for coming down the mountain to this lower mountain in the rainy summer that we've been having. And uh, and um, it's I uh, turn it over to you. <laughs> now she's deferring to me. <laughs> what? But say something first, yeah, just as a good omen. Is it <laughs> right? The yogi Ni speaks first. That's the idea. Okay. That's my idea. It's not on. What? As soon as the mic works. Hello? Just a nut working. Yeah. yeah, okay. Is that working? Yes. yes. Well, thank you for coming. And I'm delighted to be part of this. We, we talked about it and with a whole workshop on the Buddha and the yogi Ni's. We decided, and I feel ill-equipped, but other than my gender, to be here. Um, but that, that's a, actually a really good reason to be here, is my gender. And so my role this week will be to sort of bring what these two wonderful men uh, have to offer down to earth. <laughs> Which those of you who work with Richard and me know that's my role. And, uh, <laughs> and also to really look at how the feminine embodied version of what is being presented can, can shine some insight onto this. So we really welcome you all here and hopefully we can go away with some deep insights but also some information on how to take this into our practice and into our lives in this important time in history uh, where this kind of information is really important, more so than we know. Thank you. Okay, over to you, Richard. <laughs> you functioning there yet? Yeah. I'm functioning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a heart monitor. <laughs> I should clip it on the other side, maybe. Okay. <laughs> That's sensitive. This is called a nadi. <laughs> and the sound you hear is nada. <laughs> Which means. This is all part of the uh, program. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, 
seems to be currently that the, the uh, yoginis um, tend to do the practical thing of making things work by getting them to relate to their environments, you know, to the actual circumstances, uh, which are usually quite vast and complex. And so, oftentimes, you know, in the, I think in the, the male-oriented lineages, which um, you end up with uh, multiple yoginis, uh -huh. uh, although that is switched, uh, Later on, in some interesting texts, they switch that where there's, you know, multiple yogis surrounding mm -hmm. uh, the goddess, mm -hmm. the yogini. Um, but you know, the the complexity of just practical life, and uh, certainly this is true, you know, in our current culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the rise of the feminine mm -hmm. uh, is. It's coming. <laughs> and so, um, let's see, should we get into it? Um, I brought with me um, one text called the, the Devi Mahatmyam, uh, which is the glorification of the Devi. Now, this is a, probably a fourth or fifth century text, and it was one of the first actual philosophical presentations of the Shakta tradition, mm -hmm. uh, which is the part of the, the, those traditions that lie just outside the orthodox traditions, mm -hmm. in which what had been going on forever already, thousands and thousands of years, um, on the edge of any tradition you get the, the um, people who don't quite fit in, like, like us, <laughs> and, and particularly when you have an orthodox tradition, one of the, the nice things about orthodoxy is right outside of it, that's where you get interesting people who don't quite, they have to re reinterpret everything to make it work for them. And so uh, I've always uh, said that, you know, when you go to, you know, I lived for a year in a place called Vrindavan, Mm -hmm. uh, in North India, and I've just occurred to me recently that the word vrinda means a swarm, like in a swarm of honeybees. Uh -huh. And so it is the forest. Yeah. yeah. So it's the forest of honeybee swarms, mm -hmm. which are yoginis, and little yoginis that come. <laughs> and uh, but being there, you know, there are so many temples and ashrams, uh -huh. and each, you know, full of, you know like gurus and like this guy and, and uh, you go to each one and each one is the best one and then they're always talking about their neighbors down the street which they're going don't go to those guys they're actually crazy <laughs> and then but we got to be ready at any moment yeah, yeah, but, the local uh, but what I always found was the the nice thing there was all of the alleyways between the temples and uh -huh. the ashrams because that's when you'd run into like just miscellaneous yogis, yogis and sadhus who were just like just radiant, you know, <laughs> sweet, uh, nice people with no agenda. They didn't try to like <laughs> capture you and get your credit card. Number. <laughs> and uh, so I've always, you know, at that time, this idea that uh, um, the real juice flows in between things, mm -hmm. the, um, flows in between traditions. Even when you make a tradition out of flowing between traditions, you're going to still make a counter tradition, uh -huh. a tradition that flows between the Absolutely. traditions. And so it just keeps, just like water. Uh, it just keeps flowing uh, in between things. Um, and that's the yogini thing. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to articulate. Anyway, so this is a, and the reason I chose this yeah. is because it was short and sweet. 
And there's only the fifth chapter is the only one that I really uh, am very familiar with. And so on page eight here we have, the, and this is just called the uh, the Devi Tantrika Sutam uh, uh, is the name of this. And it's just these. And the nice thing is that they're easy to chant once you get to the fourth verse down because it's all repetition. And that's probably why I remember it. Um, and then we I, we sent out a PDF uh, for those of you into the electronic that's right. cyber world. And there's the, the PDF is the entire daily life. Right. Right. Um, and because then you get to see all of the bloody, gory, wild 